has received that. We're going to continue our series entitled The Power of Words. You know, family, it's so important that we know and understand who we are in him. We are spiritual beings. Your maker created you in his image and in his likeness. You are very capable of operating in the God class because that's how he created you. Your blood-bought DNA is made up of deity. You've been called into his divine nature in order to partake with it. You aren't only human. The greater one resides on the inside of you. Because of who he is, you cannot fail. Because of who he is, because of who's residing on the inside, every place you walk, the enemy has to bow down. Every place you go, sickness is subject to your words. It's important that we know and understand that. You're made in the image. I'm made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. Family, situations and circumstances are waiting for instructions from you, from me. What are we going to say? It's important. The definition of faith is spoken belief. When you believe God's word, what you speak is full of supernatural power. So far in this series, we saw that God never does anything without saying it first. We saw that in the beginning, God said and said and said and creation took place. Your words are keys. We learned that thoughts are words in seed form. Last week, Pastor Jerry preached on words of truth. He shared that dead things come to life with the power of words. He showed us that it worked in Lazarus' life and it'll work in all of our lives. He talked about how authority is spoken and the word of God is timeless. It's alive and it's true. He declared that the gospel will go forth and transform generations to come. Your kids and your kids' kids will benefit from the true word of God. He instructed us to hear the word, believe the word, speak the word, and be healed like the woman who had the issue of blood. Today, my assignment is to share how to know God, how to imitate God, and how to speak like God. Let's go to John chapter 8 and verse 31. We'll look at verses 31 and 32. I'm going to be coming from the Amplified Version. This is the classic Amplified. It says, so Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. Raise your hand if you desire to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Verse 32 goes on to say, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Knowing God, knowing will always end up showing. Say that with me. Knowing will always end up showing. Always. The result of knowing God is fruit in your life. That word know is the same word used in Genesis when Adam knew Eve. Because of Adam knowing Eve, something was born. Someone was born. And I submit to you this morning when you and I know him, something is born on the inside of us. There's something that takes place when you and I know God. I heard it said salvation happens when we believe in Jesus 
Transformation happens when we understand that Jesus believes in us. When we get the understanding of how much he loves us and exactly what it is that he did for us, transformation takes place. If you were the only one on the earth, Jesus still would have said yes. With all of your mess. Yeah. When you and I weren't thinking about him, he was sent to die on our behalf. He was sent to shed his pure blood for you and I to live in and walk in righteousness. What he did was enough. It doesn't matter what you're facing today. It must bow down to the power and the presence of Almighty God. And that begins to take place when you and I choose to speak life, when you and I choose to speak according to the Word of God. Only those who continue in God's Word become disciples indeed. Only those who choose to be disciplined ones in the Word of God get the revelation of who he really is. When that takes place, it's different. When you know someone, when someone says something about them, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't set well. There's a difference between knowing God and hearing about God. Admiring him from afar is different than knowing him. Husbands, you know your wives. You're not acquainted with your wives. Wives, you know your husband. You're not acquainted with them. You know them. So important, knowing is intimacy. The type of intimacy that only comes with experience. It's only the truth we know that will set us free. You know, that's easy to, to, to misunderstand that. It's not even right to say the word will set you free. It's the word that we know that sets us free. The word that we know and experience. Raise your hand if you've been healed by God. Raise your hand if you've been healed by God. You know God heals. You know God, you know God heals. You're not guessing. You're not, you're not hoping God heals. You know it. You've experienced the goodness of God. That changes the way you perceive him. This is the definition of a disciple. A disciple is a person who continues. Say continue. Continue until you experience. Guys, remember back in the day when we were pursuing our wives? We were continuing. We were relentless. We, we, kept, we kept on. What if she didn't call you back? So what? You persevere. You continued. And you know because of your continuing, there was a reward. There was an experience. True or not true? Along with John 15, 8, where Jesus said a disciple is one who bears much fruit. I submit to you today that much fruit does not show up without you and I continuing. Whenever we're tempted to quit, we are not listening to the one on the inside of us. You've said before, I've said before, I can't do it. Every chance you said that, I don't make any assumptions. If you said before, I can't do it. You know what that means? That means we just lost sight of who was on the inside of us. You know what? You, you can't do it. Let me help you. You can't. But he can. He has already provided everything that you and I need. Continue to God's word until there is proof so that you and I can be witnesses of his fruit. Knowing will always end up showing. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Where are you guys going? We're going to look at this in the Passion Translation. We'll, we'll, it's going to be on the screen if you don't have 
a digital Bible. You can't flip to the Passion. We'll read it together. I, I, I want, because what we're going to talk about is knowing God, imitating God, knowing God, and imitating God. And we can't imitate him. Is that simple enough to understand? We can't imitate him. We don't know. Right? So, Romans, not Romans, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Be imitators of God in everything you do. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why in the world did it have to say everything? In everything you do. That changes it. Because there's some people, if we're honest, that you just don't like. True or not true? Am I the only one to have people in my life that I don't like? Anybody else out there have somebody in your life that you don't like? There's a couple of honest people in the room. <laughs> Everybody has come across or is still interacting with that sandpaper person in your life. How does God treat them? Ouch! We're called to be imitators of God in everything that we do. Let's read on. For then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters. Family, you, it is impossible for us to represent the father if we don't imitate him. It's impossible to represent the Son if we don't imitate Him. You see, Jesus got it right. Jesus only did, Jesus only said what He heard His Father say. And then Jesus put you and I on assignment, and He said in John 14, 12, the works that I did, family, sisters, and brothers, you will do also. We ain't got to talk about the greater. Let's, let's get to the, the same works. The promise is we're going to do greater works than him. Family, that doesn't happen if we don't imitate him. Even if we don't feel like it, even if we don't want to, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's outside of our personality, our scope of it, even if it's, it's nerve-wracking, even if it's not about what we want, it's not about our will, it's always about his will. Somebody say amen to that because it's truth. And when we know him, we can imitate him. So very necessary so that the world sees that Jesus is still alive. But the war, how, how many people are watching us? How many people are experiencing the glory because of our obedience? How many people know there's a God because they see it in you? You realize we're called to be Christ? Jesus Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. The word Christ means anointed one and his anointing. Raise your hand if you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are full of anointing. You not only house the anointed one, but you house his anointing. Only the Holy Spirit can help us imitate God in everything that we do. Your father spoke things into existence. Speak the desired results in your life. Do you realize there's no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit? The same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. 
And when you speak to anything that's dead in your life, life must come to pass. The same spirit that told Lazarus to come out dwells on the inside of you. The same spirit that told Peter to come is calling you and I. The reason why the word says deep calls unto deep is because we got more to do. It's important for you and I to get out of his way, yield, and be used like never before. There's somebody in your life that needs to see Jesus in you. There's somebody in your life that needs to see the power of God flowing through you. Someone needs to see, I know they're going through it. How in the world are they still smiling? Why is there joy in their life? How in the world are they continuing? It's because the greater one lives in me. It's because the greater one lives on the inside of you. Verse 2 of Ephesians chapter 5 says, let's read it together. Ready? Read. And continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. Let's pause right there continue there it is again didn't we read that in john 8 31 continue the evidence of you and i yielding to his extravagant love is continuing to walk in him continuing to shine to love anyway for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us his great love for us was pleasing to God. The way you and I please God is demonstrating his extravagant love through us. What is it in our lives that we need to reconsider? What is it in our lives that we need to grab a hold of and say, is God being honored in this? Is my neighbor seeing Jesus or Freddie? Has my neighbor experienced my words more than God's words? There is a reason to evaluate and reevaluate, and I know I'm not on my own. I know we have, I like to say, opportunity for growth. All of us have opportunity to grow in him and allow him to shine. Through us. The love of Christ is demonstrated when you and I choose to continue. His great love for us was pleasing to God. How many of you want to please God? Raise your hand if you really, I mean, not just to respond. If you really want to please God, people must see His extravagant love going through you when they don't feel like it. Imitating God includes demonstrating great love when it's not easy, when it's not convenient, when we're weak. You might be thinking, hold up, hold up, hold up, pastor. I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. Weakness is a great opportunity for God to show himself strong in our lives. So back up, Rambo. Hear me out. His strength begins at the point of our giving in. The proof text is 2 Corinthians. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 it says, and he said to me, this is New King James, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in what? In weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My God, what an awesome opportunity for you and I to demonstrate God's extravagant love when we get weak, when we begin to feel 
like caving in. We began to listen in to the to the to the enemy's accusations. We began to listen to the the the, the enemy's suggestions of you know it ain't worth it. You know you've been doing this for all this time. What has it got you? Where's it? Where's it? Where where has it got? Where has it got you? If we want Christ to rest upon us, we have to continue. Weakness is not the end of you. It's the beginning of him. Hallelujah. That would make sense for Paul to say, therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmity because he knew it was the power of God that's about to kick in. He knew he was about to faint. He was about to give in. He knew that the power of God is about to show up. Where we in, he begins. Where we are weak, he is strong. That makes sense to to lie to ourselves and pretend like we never get weak, we never, we never feel like. That's the reason why the word says, do not get weary in well-doing. Because weariness is going to come knocking on your door for sure. The promise is, he rests on us. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our What's it say? For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. If you do not pray in the Holy Ghost, if you have yet to experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you are shortchanging yourself, and it's not necessary. If you haven't prayed in the Holy Ghost recently, you are not building yourself up on your most holy faith. And family, all you got to do is look around. This is a time when you and I need most. Amen? True or not true? We need our most holy faith flowing through our lives. This is not the time to have little faith. This is not the time to be, to, be, to be stuck and stumbling and trying to figure out who you are. You are his, and he is yours. You are the greater one because you've allowed the greater one to live on the inside of you. Because you said, yes, the I am abides in you. What a powerful revelation. There is no lack on the inside of me because of who's there. Abide means to dwell, to stay. The Holy Spirit moved in. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead moved in. You are his temple. His address is you. My God, Lord, help us to grab hold of the truth of your word. Help us to yield. Give us ears to hear. Help us, Lord. Help us. Say this with me. Say, I choose to have ears to hear. And you know I'm not talking about your outside ear. I'm talking about your inner ear. I'm talking about the innermost being of who you are to be quickened this morning. And for you begin to go and flow in the power of who you are. Because the power of who you are changes things. It's not right for Peter's shadow to heal and yours not to. Listen to me. God, God does not admire Peter more than he admires you. God does not exalt Paul over you. In fact, we have everything that they did and then some begin to place a demand on the anointing in your life and change the world. Start with your household, and your community, your city. Live by faith. Those of you who are, are watching online, there's somebody who's just been discouraged. There's someone who's, been, who's been, been listening to way too much media, and the Lord is saying to you, look up. Hear my words. Trust me. Remember me. 
and allow me to comfort you, to lead you, and to guide you. You're, you've been struggling with confusion. You don't know what to do, where to go. But the Lord is trying to lead you today. It's not a coincidence that you tuned in. He desires to minister to you right where you are. Receive that. Let our media team know if that's you. Let them know that, that you tuned in and, and, and the Lord began to speak to you. We'd love to hear from you. Let's go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. In order to know God, in order to imitate God, we must choose the faith life. We must choose to walk by faith and not by sight. We must choose to understand that what he says is more important than what they say. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Verse 17. For it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Look at your neighbor and say, you are the just. Sylvia, you are the just. Tia, you are the just. Your lifestyle has been designed by God to live it by trusting, relying, and having all confidence in him. How do we do this? By speaking. This is my last point. We talked about, what was the first one? Knowing God. What was the second one? Imitating God. The third one is speak like God. Let's do that again. Come on, class. The first one was what? Knowing God. The second one was what? Imitating God. And the third one is what? Speaking like God. Take your thoughts captive. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, chapter 4 through 5. Take your thoughts captive. How do we do that? How do we take our thoughts captive? captive. We do that by the power of words. You cannot, your brain cannot process thoughts and words at the same time. So whenever there's a thought that is bombarding your mind and you don't like it and you know it's not of God, all you have to do is say something. The moment you say something, you can't, you can't say your ABCs in your mind and begin to recite 1 through 10 without your mind saying, wait, 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 wait a minute, what, what, what number is he on? It's in, listen to me, family, it's impossible to have your mind doing one thing and your mouth doing another. Your mind is subject to the power of your words. So the next time the enemy says you're going to fail, I am the righteousness of God. And your mind heard that. And your mind has to bow down and listen to what your mouth is saying. I don't know if you understand that. That is a tremendous truth that you and I can grab a hold of and walk in freedom in every area of our lives. It has to listen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down, what's it say? Arguments? Have you had an argument with yourself? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against you knowing him. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to fail this time. This thing is going to kill me. I don't think I'm going to make it out of this. Those are all thoughts that you have the authority, grab hold of, snatch down, and say, I am his. By his strike, by his stripes, I am healed. You know what? Your healing has nothing to do with you. 
You know, when we feel a deficit, a void, when we feel ourselves incapable, we have to understand who he is has nothing to do with us. Please hear this. His ability is not subject to your ability. His ability is not limited by your experience, your background, your upbringing. God is God. Victory is already yours. Alignment. When things are aligned, they flow. God desires for you and I to align ourselves with his word because you know what will begin to happen? We'll begin to know him, we'll begin to imitate him, and we'll begin to speak like him. We'll be able to say, no, I will live and die and declare the works of the Lord. We will begin to automatically. You know, there's every one of us has a program autoresponder. Automatically, every one of us have something that's already been programmed on the inside of us. The, 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 what's so powerful is words will work while we are catching up to the reality of it. <laughs> they will work on us while we are still yet not understanding. Think about it. The very first time we felt rejected by words was the very first time someone spoke something negative to us. True or not true? The very first time someone says you're not going to make it. I remember somebody looking at me, a deacon. I ain't going to say his name. He might be around still. But, but there, was a, there was a deacon who looked at me and said, boy, you ain't going to amount to nothing. You'll be in jail or dead before you turn 21. And I was trying to, I was meandering my way through the things of God's life, but I knew that was not my identity. I knew that was something wrong with that. And there, there was something that, there was something on the inside of me that rejected that. I didn't believe that at all. But I had tons of friends who did. You know, I'm thinking of my childhood buddies, and I can think of two, maybe, that made it out. One got life in prison. One got shot. One got strung out. I'll never forget my best friend coming around the corner. I was coming around the corner, and God was just so... See, this is why if you're a mom, don't you ever stop praying for your kids. Don't you ever stop praying for your grandma. You get like double power. It's like, <laughs> I believe grandparents are dear to God's heart. I remember walking around the corner and my cousin had my best friend on his knees with a gun, in his, with a gun to his head. And I walk around the corner and I see this and my cousin chuckled. And uh, hit my best friend in his head, said, man, you lucky, you lucky, you lucky he came around here. And there were times when bullets were flying over our heads. And some of the people I grew up with believed the words that were spoken on the inside of them. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt because of my mom dragging me to church so your kids are kicking and screaming don't don't get a hey, come on in here sit down because something happened on the inside of me there was a auto responder that said no there was a auto there was here's my point words can steal your destiny if you're not quick to say no that's not of god when you hear the devil say anything negative and you know it's the devil, you know for sure that it's a lie. If you ever 
hear a condemning word, it doesn't matter who it comes from, you know it is not of God because of Romans 8, 1 and 2. It says, there is therefore no, it doesn't matter who the, who the, the, the condemning is coming, it doesn't matter, it is not your reality, it is not true, and you don't have to attach to it. When Pastor Jerry was, was talking about words of truth, these are the only words that are fitting to be allowed on the inside of us. The only way we renew our minds is by renewing our minds with the word of truth. Not negative, anything. It doesn't matter even if it's you. Even if you say, I can't do it. You've lended your vessel to the enemy. Use your words. Your God-given authority is words. The world was created by the spoken words of God. The Bible says that all things are held together by the word of God's power. Trust the word and continue in it. Say this to someone. Say, function in the fruits. Function in the fruits. The fruit of the Spirit are always readily available. If you said yes to Jesus, the fruits of the Spirit are are always ready. You know, you don't have to slap them. You don't have to rent them off the road. You don't have to cuss anybody out. You have fruits that are readily available that you can pull on. Function in the fruits. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Cast your cares on Jesus. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 8. You know, there's an anointing available to heal. If you are suffering anything in your body, stand to your feet. If there is anything going on inside of your body, stand to your feet. There is, the, the, there is an anointing to heal present right now. Uh, somebody stand around, turn, turn around and reach your hands out towards these individuals that are standing. If you are standing online, the word of God, there is no space or time. That's hindering the anointing, the power of God. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for healing us. Thank you that you chose to have your stripes then benefit us now. And we boldly declare healing flowing. Pain, go in Jesus' name. Begin to, what, what, what was going on inside of you? Whatever, is, whatever was going on, somebody, somebody talk to me. What's, what, 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 what was happening? What was happening? Anybody, what are you feeling? What was going on? Shoulder? How's it feeling? Good, raise your hand straight up. Hallelujah. Pain go in Jesus' name. Pain go in Jesus' name. Somebody else? Anybody else? What were you feeling? What are you feeling now? Is there any, any difference? Pain in your chest? How are you feeling? Good. Is it gone? It's going away. Raise your hands nice and high. When do you lay hands on her? Thank you, Lord. Pain, go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Pain in the chest, go in Jesus' name. Healing flow in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. If you are online and you're experiencing healing right now, we want to hear about it. Let us know. Healing is for you now. Healing is of God, from God, for his precious ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for healing. How you doing? How you doing? Good? Is it gone? Good. Somebody lay hands on her. It's got to go. It's got to go now. The anointing doesn't come the anointing don't come for it to stay. The anointing comes so it can go. Thank you, Lord. Healing, flow in the name of Jesus. Pain, go. Pain in the back, go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Go in Jesus' name. Healing, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Uh, this is the, the Passion Translation. It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season 
of life. Let joy overflow. Now, notice it says, let joy overflow. That wouldn't be in there if you and I didn't have anything to do with it. Let joy overflow. For you are united with who? Oh, my God. You are united with the anointed one. Healing is yours. You are united. You are one with the anointing. It goes on to say, let gentleness be seen in every, re- dear God, there they go again. Every relationship, Lord. Every, every relationship. Be, let gentleness be, now notice gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. That means it's not subject to you. Please hear that. Gentleness is not subject to your feelings, your emotions. Gentleness is a fruit of the spirit that's readily available, so you can treat them kind. (laughs) For our Lord is ever near, dear God. Verse 6 says, do not be pulled in different directions. Is Is this not a word for today? Do not be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. It's not normal to worry, family. It's not normal. Anxiety is not normal. Anxiety is trespassing. If you have ever said, oh, I'm going to worry, Ward, that's not of God. It's trespassing. Be saturated. Listen, listen to these instructions. Be sec- Does this say be religious? It says, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Verse 7 says, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Wow. Verse 8. So keep your thoughts. Say that out loud. Keep your thoughts. Now, the reason why it says so keep your thoughts is because you have a say-so in that. You can choose what you think. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable, and uh, and, and admirable. How do you say that? Admirable? Honorable and admirable, thank you. Honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts, this is instructions, fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him when you feel like it. Praising him when you have plenty, no, what's it say? Praising him always. That means it's in your hands. Praise him when you don't feel like it. Praise him when you don't see the outcome you desire. Praise him when you don't know what you're going to do. When you praise him always, he does what he does best. We have to trust Mark 11 or 9, Mark 9, 23. It says, it says Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible. God maximizes who we are when we believe him. We are enhanced, empowered, and equipped when we simply believe him. We are called to believe the impossible. That's what he does. Think about that for a second. If it's possible to us, what reason would God have to be involved? God is the God of the impossibilities. I'm I'm challenging you today. Begin to believe God for the impossible. Begin to set your words aligned with the word of God. Agree with him. Jesus said, if you can can believe, it's your choice. Matthew 17, 20 
So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for it surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. The very last part of that says, And nothing will be impossible. Nothing. Everything around you is subject to the words on the inside of you. Dear God, thank you, Lord. Jesus operated in faith principles. He spoke to the wind, to the sea, to demons, to the fig tree, and he spoke to the dead. Everything responded. Everything that he spoke to bowed down and responded to him. And because of who you are, because you, you have chosen. Let's go to John 14, 12. John 14, 12, then we'll wrap it up. We'll go through our application. John chapter 14 and verse 12. This is the word of God to you. This is your love letter from him. This is his heart's desire for you. John chapter 14. Let's put that up on the screen. John chapter 14, verse 12. And let's read this together. Let's collectively declare our position in him. Ready? Read. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, stop right there, and declare, I believe in you. Say that out loud. Ready? I believe in you. Now read on. The works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Family, you are called to the greater. Application. Number one says what? Spend time with God. Just be his. How many of you like to hang out with your wives? How many of you like to hang out with your husbands? Raise your hand. How many, how many of you like to hang out with your best friend? You know, just, just be his. You know, spend time with God. Be his. Number two says what? Hear the word. Give yourselves a hand for hearing the word this morning. Give yourselves a hand for being here and hearing the word of God. Uh, our assignment is to continue in it. Continue in the word. Number three says what? Walk by faith, not by by sight imitate God that's how you do that you walk by faith by imitating God believe the impossible make the decision I'm going to believe in, and say that with me say I'm going to believe the impossible because the greater one lives on me and he does it number four says what guard your heart Family, listen to me. No matter what is going on, live to forgive. Live to forgive. Unforgiveness is the greatest way to taint your heart. It's the greatest way to influence your heart, to be hardened. And it becomes a filter that, 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 that hinders you from receiving from him. And listen to me, nobody is worth that. Nobody is. I, I, I know it was painful. I, I know you didn't deserve it. Don't allow anyone to cause you to harden your heart. God has so much to do through you. God has so many people to touch because of your obedience. Choose to be a vessel. Amen? Where am I at? One more? Number five says what? Keep your thoughts on Jesus for yourself and for others. Lord, what, what, how should I see this individual? Lord, help me to see me the way you see me. When we keep our thoughts on Jesus, we're going to be all right. Well, I'm going to have the, before I have the prayer team come up, I'm going to uh, dismiss those who are watching online. You know, it's always an absolute honor and a privilege to stand before you and bring the Word of God. I know without a shadow of a doubt, the Word of God will make all the difference in your life. Freedom is found in the Word of God. 
the, the truth that you know will always set you free. Knowing always results in showing. God bless you. We'll see you next week.